Welcome back guys, it's craft time. In today's video, we are taking cute little baby dolls and giving them a makeover. So I'm gonna walk you through how I turned this little baby doll into a creepy little Pennywise, or my mini Penny as I call him. So let's get clowning. All right, I did not video this set because it was looking a wee bit rainy outside, so I just wanted to get it done. So all I did was take my Rust-Oleum 2X um, spray paint and spray paint my dolls. I just did this because one, I'm gonna want him to be white overall and it'll give me the smoothest um, coverage that I could do. I mean, you could probably do a brush with like, and then like sponge over it, but that would take a whole lot longer. So spray paint is your friend. Just make sure that you do one side, let it dry completely before flipping it over and doing the other side. Um, I think I did two to three coats on um, the baby doll just to make sure he was completely covered and ready to move on. So to begin this project, um, I just kind of grabbed the supplies I knew I was going to need, but I'm not going to give you a supply list because it's kind of all over the place. But in general, I used um, a yarn for the hair, some lace um, ribbon stuff for his outfit. I used acrylic paint for his face and then some of these little like pom poms for his little dots on his chest and then um, as you see later I had a small red Christmas ornament that I used for his balloon and yeah let's just jump into it I started out by going ahead and painting his face I just took my time I had uh, my laptop sitting next to me with a picture pulled up for reference um, I gave him his nice creepy little yellow eyes with a good dark outline around his eyes um, I just did the smallest brush that I could find um, to give it that detail without um, it being overwhelming and if I did mess up I just went back over and cleaned up my fix-ups with the color needed and then whenever you know he kind of has that like um, shadowy under eye so I just dipped I had black on my paintbrush already I just dipped that in water wrung out most of the water but to where it'd be kind of watery and um, did under his eye and then I just dabbed it with a q-tip that way it made it that like shadowy um, underneath eye without it being too much and then I was ready to move on to his lips I took my red acrylic paint and just added a little bit of black to it that way I could um, darken that color just a little bit I didn't want it to be too bright and I painted his lips. I just used the guideline of the doll. It already has a good shaped mouth on it. I filled that all the way in and then I was ready to move on to those um, lines that go down his face and curve out. Now I wanted to make sure that they were symmetrical and looked really good so I went in with a pencil first and I just drew what my outline would be to give me a guideline and then I went in with my paintbrush and um, traced it and then just cleaned it up and made it all look nice and clean cut and symmetrical or as symmetrical as you can when you're hand painting things there will be little imperfections but that's what makes it look handmade and homemade and um yeah I think his face turned out really great I'm gonna wait and let his mouth dry before I add in his little teeth but I'll bring you back to that whenever we're ready so then we can go ahead and move on to the also don't forget to paint his nose now for the next part I just grabbed I have this little package of those like little pom-poms that you can find in any crafting shed section of like Walmart or craft store or pretty much anywhere and I took out the red ones and these do have those like foil like shiny things that stick out a little further I didn't really care for that look so I did take my scissors and trim those down all the way around and then just kind of held it up just to kind of get a visual of where those are gonna go that way whenever I do add like his lacy outfit it all looks cohesive so I went ahead and did that just to kind of get an idea and then I set it aside so I could start on his hair now I'm making his hair out of yarn and to do this I am just taking my yarn and wrapping it around I just use the stable box so it's about two and a half inches um, tall and I wrapped it around about 40 times so I'm doing this and then I'm going to once I get it wrapped cut it you know where the last string ends cut it on that side all the way down as close to the middle as I can and then I'll have a bunch of strings the length that I need them. Um, I kind of determined this by just holding yarn up to his head, seeing how long I needed it to be, folding it in half 
and then just adding a little bit more so that I can actually use it to secure it to a pencil or a pen or something like that. Now what you're going to want to do is take it, fold it in half to create a loop, put the loop underneath whatever you're securing it to, and take the two tails and push it through the loop and pull it tight. And that should secure it around the item without like, it's not really tied there, it can still move, but it'll keep it in place for what you need it to do. And you're just gonna do this all the way through. Now you can either try to measure it to where it's gonna be, you know, the exact width that you need. But for me, I just kind of did however many I wanted because I planned on just like kind of cutting them up and putting them together however I needed to rather than trying to make them exact because this is the first time I've ever done um, hair like this. So you just do as many in a row as you need and then you're going to need a fine tooth comb and you're going to comb it out. So what I did is I started at the very tips and I just combed it out and then I moved up a little bit further, you know, maybe like um, halfway up, combed it out and then three fourths of the way up, combed it out, and then all the way up and combed it out. Um, and this is basically just gonna untwist the yarn and um, separate it out to where it will look more like hair. Now, when I did the next round of it, I did you know the, the first the part on the bottom and then I flipped it over and did the part on the bottom uh, um, on that side. And then I went halfway up and then flipped it again and went halfway up. And that did help um, just untwist it and make the process go a little bit faster. You are going to lose yarn. You, as you can see, I have fuzzies building up. I just pull them off and um, throw them away. Uh, it's going to happen. It's yarn. Even the higher quality stuff, you're going to have some of that. So don't freak out about it. It's okay. Um, so then after that, what you're going to do is you're going to want to have some type of plastic. I'm just using a Ziploc bag and then some Elmer's glue or Mod Podge. And what you're going to do is you're just going to make a strip of the whatever you're using as your adhesive. And then you're going to cut right underneath that tie and you're going to lay it flat on top of with just the tips of where the hair, like the root of the hair would be onto the glue. Now, if you don't want your hair to be as messy as this, you can use a straightener um, on the lowest setting that you have and straighten it out before you cut it off the pencil and that will make it look a little more sleek and um, put together. But he's a scary clown, so I just kept it like that. I thought it looked really good. So as you can see, I'm just placing it all out and then I'm gonna take a, you can, I use the paintbrush, you just have to be careful um, to make sure you're holding the hair in place. And then I brushed more glue on the tips to make sure that um, the hair that's on the top also is like stuck to something. That way it's not just free floating and it's not just the bottom layer that has the glue. So then once you get that done and it's everything secure, you're just gonna set that to the side and let it dry. Um, I would suggest that you do that step first, honestly, like spray paint your baby and then do the hair because it took longer to dry than I would like. I don't have the best patience. I like to know like, okay, the project's done. It looks so good. If I start a project, I typically have to finish it because I cannot stand, like I have no patience and can't wait to see what it looks like finished. So while that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and do his outfit. Again, I just have this um, little, not even a spool, just this little um, container of um, lacy ribbon. And you can find that at any of your craft stores or like a Joann's fabric, probably even Walmart. It's, it's not anything special. So I just took it and I wrapped it around his um, wrists and his feet to find out how long I needed it to be. Then I made it a little bit longer just to make sure. So I basically did one hand and then just cut, like laid it on top of each other and cut it to where I would have um, one for each hand. And then I also wrapped it around his collarbone um, to see how that was going to look there. Now in the movie, even like the newer one, the old one too, he has multiple layers. Um, so I'm going to do two layers just to give that multi-layer effect without having it be too much or take over. So I just cut two to the size that I need and then I will hot glue those together um, in a little bit later. So I'm going to go ahead and just wrap it around. I hot glued the two ends together. And then to make sure that they were secure and not gonna like slide up and down the arms and legs, um, I hot glued it to the back of the heels on each one and I put the seam underneath. That way you couldn't see where the seam was. 
And then for his wrists, I did the same thing where the seam was, I put it, you know, where it wasn't the most visual and then I um, hot glued it to the wrist. That way it's not just sliding freely on his arms. And then I took a hot glue, I just did a strand across um, one piece of the lace and I layered the other one on top of it. And then I secured that with hot glue around his neck. And I think this looks super cute and works out really perfect. Um, and is very, very simple. So I don't sew. Nothing that I do on this channel is gonna involve a needle with thread at any point, most likely. So hot glue is my best friend, I use it in almost everything. So once I'm done with his clothes, we're gonna move over and go ahead and just paint his teeth on. Um, I just used the tip of my brush and kind of dabbed it. His teeth are kind of gnarly and, and messy, so it doesn't have to be perfect by any means. Um, I did make them a little close together, so I just took the red that I used for his lips, touched it right in the middle to give a small gap for more of a visual effect, and then I moved on to do his pom-poms. Now, originally I planned on using two, but then after I put the frills on there, I realized they just didn't fit. They seemed too big. So I cut one in half and then I cut it in half again. So I used one fourth of the palm. I put hot glue in the middle of it with my silicone pads and I squished it back into a ball. Don't do this with your bare fingers. You will burn yourself. This is experience talking. These little um, silicone thimbles are my best friend. They've been such a great purchase and I got them from the Dollar Tree. So you should definitely check them out. But anyway, so I cut them down, made a little ball, and then I attached it. And then when I put my second one on, I realized I didn't cut it exact, so it was a little smaller. I just took another little snip of the piece, added hot glue, and built it back up around so you can't really tell. Um, especially because he's going to be sitting, so his legs will be blocking it a little. I'm not really too worried about that imperfection. So the next thing I did is I knew that I had um, these little miniature red ornaments from Christmas. So I'm gonna use that for his balloon. Now I've seen that people use um, ping pong balls. So they'll, so they'll take a red balloon, put the ping pong ball in it, and then secure it around it. And it makes a cute little balloon. It looks perfect and obviously very realistic because it's actually a balloon. Um, but I didn't have that on hand and I didn't wanna buy a package of balloons just for one. So I felt like that was wasteful. So I'm gonna use this because I knew I had it in storage. I pulled it out, I took the tip of it off. And then I'm gonna use some of my floral blocks. So it's just like that star foamy stuff to where you can uh, put fake flowers in to keep them, or I guess any flowers in, to keep them in place where you want them. And I'm just cutting slivers of that and pushing that down into the ornament. And the reason I'm doing that is one, to make sure that it's not easily collapsible to where it would break easier, but also so that when I use, I'm using a Q-tip as the string. When I push that into it, it has something to, stick to so not only the side of the ornament but like it has something to help secure it and keep it in place so i just kept doing that over and over until it was full um once it kind of started getting full i just used the q-tip to push it in and then add a little more push it in add it a little more and then i just took hot glue put it on the tip of the q-tip put it in kind of secured it to the side and to the top of where that um foam was or star foam i'm not really sure what material it is and then once that dried, I took more hot glue and I just put it and filled the tip. That way it couldn't just break really easily. And then I just set that aside. Now it's time to come back to the hair. It was still not dry when I came back to it and this to process did take a while. So I took my hair dryer on a very low heat or if you have like the cooling button and I just blasted it, um, I kind of held it down. I weighted down my um, plastic bag with some stuff so it wouldn't blow away and then I put my hand over the stuff like over top of it and then just hit the glue strip with it and I did that on the three sections that I had until it was dry enough to pull it off the bag now I did this very carefully because the underneath was still wet but I have no patience my suggestion is for you to wait however this did work for me so I very very carefully peeled it off so then the other underneath was still wet and I just set it down to where the wet side was up. That way I could put my heat gun on it because the plastic would have melted. I put my heat gun on low and I um, went over it and that dried it up really quickly. That way I could move forward with this process. So if you're like me and don't have patience, that's my suggestion, but the best thing to do would be to just wait. Um, so now it's time to add his hair. Um, what you wanna do is take the glue strip and cut the edges off to make it a nice straight edge 
Um, when you're putting the hair down or the yarn down, the straighter you make it, the better it's going to look, but you can use your scissors to clean it up and make it look a lot better. And then you're just going to use the strips to kind of fill his head. I decided to do mine in strips horizontally, starting at the bottom of the back of his head. That way, whenever I layer it to the next side up, it falls over top of itself, just like your hair would do. So um, I just dropped it around the back and then I went to the next one and I added it. I made sure, you know, if it was too long, I just cut a little bit off. If it was too short, then I just cut a little bit off another piece and put it on. It's really easy to cut it. You could actually rip it. It's just that little sliver of glue. But what I did was just make sure I was in between pieces. So you can kind of see where like the yarn strand is. You can just cut right in between that to where you don't make a big mess or mess too much of it up. So I just used hot glue, put a strip on, pushed it down, put a strip on, pushed it down. And then whenever I got to the front of his head, you know, his he has a lot of forehead showing and then he has that like widow's peak. I just took, I cut off a little strip of it, fluffed it out, and then put it straight in the middle of his forehead, you know, in front of that last layer. And then I took other smaller strips and I kind of built it around to where it formed a bit of a triangle, but not a harsh triangle. It's where it all kind of like blended together. That way it forms that hairline that he, um, he has. And then after that, once it was nice and dry, I just took my fingers and kind of raked it into, you know, he kind of has like those three mounds on his head. I just kind of separated the yarn and it doesn't, I mean, it stays pretty well. It does kind of move so you can kind of form it to where you want it to be, but it's like a loose form. So I just kind of mounded it into those three, um, got it into place where I wanted it, and then I just hot glued his little balloon to his hand. Um, I put hot glue on the tip of the Q-tip, put that in his palm, and then I pushed the stick in between his thumb and his finger, um, which I didn't film, so I apologize. But I think he turned out super adorable if you are into that kind of creepy thing. So I love this project. If you guys like it, Please let me know below in the comments what you think. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If I missed anything that you guys want me to clarify at all, please just let me know. I'm happy to help any way that I can. Um, I really like how he turned out. I do want to do more. I just ran out of time. So I have a f other babies here that have been partially started that I um, hope that I can get to. So just be on the lookout for those. And if there's anybody specific you want to see me try, let me know. Um, you can do hair like this in any different color of yarn. It's a really cheap and easy way to do it. It just takes a little time and patience. So yeah, I'm going to take you guys in for a closer look. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you for being subscribed to my channel. And if you're not, feel free to hit the sub button and come join my, my little crafting community. All right, I love you guys, and I will see you next time.